Right, so a lot of the plants that I'm after putting down are doing really well. There's, there was some uh, some plants taken out by the strimmer. I think the last time I used the strimmer, this uh, paulonia got taken out, but it's after coming back on. And the bananas and the grasses, these are all giant grasses. They're all doing really well. This is the original tetrapanics that I had. Unfortunately, it died and it didn't start growing from the, the trunk. But it's come up again just a couple of inches away from the, the old dead trunk. This Hedicium uh, coronarium, that's after getting huge. It's obviously doing really well in the sunny aspect. And there's a really strong growth coming here as well. It's healthy looking, and here. Um, if you have dogs and you're going to start growing some of these exotic expensive plants definitely put the sticks in I know it's an eyesore but the dogs will actually condition themselves to avoid them and uh, the dogs haven't broken any of the plants on me Pampas Gardenarium Kind of slow to take off there. And hopefully, as long as these plants keep thriving and coming back, they're not going to be disturbed. So, unfortunately, I had to take out one of the large pseudo stems, but there's there's more pups coming up. This uh, blue dragon bamboo, you see the blue one? This is after getting really healthy. It's hitting six feet there now. Cordial line is starting to multi stem from the base. Same as this one opposite. I uh, took out the banana. This is one of the victims yesterday. Unfortunately, it happens, but once those roots are strong, it'll take off again. Um, maybe going into the winter, it's not really a bad thing that the uh, more growth will go into the, the roots and stuff. The cardoons. Second one over there, they're doing, they're doing well. Yellow bamboos. Quarter lines. The bananas in the, the ground are a lot slower than the ones in the in the pots. But I think once they settle in They, they get going. That's that green and yellow stripe. Bamboo. This one's doing really well. Getting nice, nice canes. Yeah, I took this one out. But it's still throwing up all new canes. The one plant that has constant that has struggled. Um, this is the gunner, and it got a bit butchered. And I expected it to take off in the sunlight, out of the shade from the patio. And it's really struggled. 
I don't know why. Maybe they were they were poor plants or something from the garden centre that I got them in. I got two at the same time and the other one just died. We'll see what happens. The ground is not dry, it's very damp. And it's usually enough. And with the amount of rain that we've had in Ireland, basically the whole of July, the end of June, the whole of July, it's been raining. Um, it's like, I don't know, Southeast Asia or something. And it still hasn't, that's, that's an old cane. So the gunner has really struggled. These are my some of my own bamboos. It's the eucalyptus, the agonii. That's up at about eight feet now. These are fast grown trees, excellent. That's the acacia, I think it is, isn't it? With the yellow flowers that are only starting to come out. Under the oak. Here is the giganteous grasses. They're hitting 10 feet easy. A lot of bramble and stuff here. I need to take out. Another victim here was the Co Cochisifera uh, eucalyptus. Got chopped. That's, that wasn't doing well at all. They're, they're not fast growing at all. They're not like the uh, the guniite. Now, this guniite here is must be 15, 16 feet easy. They are growing super quick. And these are the first Pavilonias down. They're still growing. I still have to get in and clear all that. There's some eucalyptus trees in there. So you can see all the nettles and stuff that need to come out, bramble, everything. Right, so the fence line is down, and you see Nina here, she's like the Velociraptor in the Jurassic Park movies. She works the perimeters, Siki used to be the same. You can just hear her gawking there. She will look for every way, if there's a, if there's a leak, or a way in or a way out, she's going to find it. Then you just gotta, you gotta plug the gaps. But what I'm down here for is these are the the trees that I took up on the side of the road, and these are the uh, sweet chestnut. Um, the one that I planted into the chicken pen area that that took off. There was no dieback, but these. I think there's a two or three in here. Two of them in here started to die back. 
and this is where the pines died so I wasn't too sure if there was something in the soil that was uh, knocking them back but I came down and gave them a good soak and over the last month as well with the the rain just soaking the whole area it's in rude health it's doing really well and there should be another one down here it was alive but you can see how much bramble there is this all has to get taken out there's a baby oak the self seed and oak You can see the way they can get strangled from the, the bramble. So that is another big project to do, is to clear out all the under storage and get the grass back in and start trimming off lower limbs. So we can see in this area. And I'm hoping to grow some of the giant leaf uh, rhododendron. See this other chestnut. Ah, it's here. I'll walk past it. Here it is here. That had to be cut right back. It's alive anyway. And a sycamore I think. So ideally what I want is a broadleaf wood down here. That's a project for another another day. Right, so while I'm here, I might as well have a walk around the chicken pen area. Oh, <laughs> they're straight down. They hear everything, they're onto everything. I don't want to keep them out. So, that fat's just coming on, it looks really healthy. No! Nina. She tries to get in everywhere. Paulonia. These are thrown in much bigger leaves than the ones along by in the open aspect. There's a lot. I think when when plants are in the the full sun, they throw out lots of small leaves. But when you put plants into shaded shaded areas, um, they have to compete with trees that are above them. For the sun, so they tr they maximise it by putting out big leaves instead of lots of small leaves. So these leaves are actually small for Paulonia. It's the pseudopanax, the bamboos are all doing well. Lots of different coloured bamboos in here. Black bamboo, yellow, green. 
Um, that's the broad leaf. That's uh, the Sassa palmata. Magnolia. What is it? Macrophylla. This is the smaller of the two macrophylla. A lot of these are the plants that I brought over from France. It's another Fatsia. Polycarpa green fingers. These are all doing well. Obviously some are slower growing than others. I need to get the lawnmower back in here. Bamboos, palms. Eucalyptus. Look at the leaves on this tetrapanics. I think this is the steroidal joint. Um, I don't think there's much difference when they actually get going. There was initially this very small plants when I had one in the tunnel before I planted them out. You could see a, di a difference in the leaf. This is actually the one, a pup, half the one, up up near the seated bench. Look, my hand just basically covers here. They're growing well in this uh, shaded area. These are the new bamboos. Uh, which one is this one? Fargasia Natida Morellii Sh Shansbossum. Fargasia the Missa Jerry. They're all doing well, all thrown out new new canes. Uh, these are the two giant bamboos. Phalastachis parviafola. I actually broke the top of this stem here. The, but it's, I think I'm gonna have to support this. Because it's just growing out the way. Still looking very healthy. More eucalyptus. Looking healthy. Growing in amongst the self seeded sycamore. This is the other gi giant bamboo, yeah. Parviofola. Doesn't look like much at the moment. Probably about seven feet, but these canes are supposed to get really thick. And some of my own bamboo that I took out and brought them down, they're all doing really well. So, along this hedge line here, in years to come, hopefully, it'll be just like a wall of large bamboo which will create a great uh, wind block if the wind comes in this direction.
Everything is doing really well. I'll go up and have a look at the that jungle area in there under the trees. It's all this grass now I can use for the the compost heap. Busy. It's still going, it's still growing strong there now. A little bit slower to grow to take off. I think once once they get a season under their belt um, and the roots are settled, then they can really take off growing. This is the other blue dragon, which kind of got set back when I brought it over, but it looks really healthy now. Praseopsis mitis. That's more than double its growth anyway. It's, I think when plants are happy, they grow. And um, this is the Acanthus mollus. This is the green and white version, and anywhere I try to put this plant, it's not happy for some reason. It's getting eaten, so I don't know. I might put it in a pot or something. This is the walk and stick bamboo. Shimono bambusa. That got set back as well, but it's after throwing out a new new growth here. The fatsias love it. They look super healthy. There's still a couple of fatsias that I'm looking to get. That's the rain. Can't eat that. That's poisonous. Uh, poisonous rhubarb. These are the giant, couple of giant type blue bamboos. something that has not taken off maybe because it's it's only its first year in the ground and it's only finding its feet so to speak is the giant Spanish reed or Rondodonyx but it's still very healthy and the ground here is moist it's constantly moist damp Um, we'll see how it goes if it keeps on struggling I might move it out to a sunnier aspect, maybe over to that new bed over at the, the polytunnel. These are the... This is the Japanese grass. This is this evergreen climber. Started to train it onto the... the fence. This is the Eucalyptus Dalrempliana. I think this is all new growth here. You can see the, the colour of it. Might need a heavier stake going into winter. Fatsias are actually getting really big, quick. They were excellent plants that came over. Brassiopsis hispida. That's looking really well. That's more than doubled its growth, I'd say. Yeah, so when plants are happy, they get growing. That's Taiwaniana. The hostas haven't actually taken off like I thought they would. 
Uh, maybe they just need to settle in. These are the joint varieties. I haven't been feeding these at all. I haven't been feeding these at all. I don't want to get into a routine of um, having to feed all this stuff. So I will be putting, once the compost gets going, I will be putting down a lot of compost. There's the sassa palmata. Some new growth here. This seems to be slow growing. It's the Fargasia. See the colour on the stems. That's more sassapalma. They're doing well. After taking, see what I mean with the the leaves. They're long and broad. Very different to a lot of the bamboos, and they'll get over two meters high. They look really nice. The euphorbia there. Lots of work done, more to do.